Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 57 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just getting ready to make a couple cool things. Uh, first off, I'd like to make an export bus, and I'm kind of surprised that I don't already know how to make buses with this system, so let's do that real quick. We'll, do, uh, we'll teach this thing how to make both an export bus. Sounds like I have to do it this way. Let's do this. Uh, let's see, export bus, encode and import bus there we go encode that guy and now we know how to make them all right so i want to set up a little bit of a tweak to the way that we configured uh last episode we set up some mob farming type stuff right which was really cool and if we were to grab ourselves an export bus i'm probably going to want at least two of these guys so let's get them cooking up um and i'm also probably going to want fuzzy card yes we'll want a fuzzy card yoink and we might need another one of those advanced card things Because I'm probably going to need two fuzzy cards, but we'll see, because I made two of these. So fuzzy card number two. And then I'm also going to want capacity cards, I believe. So let's make sure we have a couple basic cards in here. Ooh, what do we need? Pure sortus? Let's get these guys cooking up. Oh, yeah. Like I said, one of these days I'll automate it so that I always have a certain number of processors ready but we'll get to that later for now we'll let this thing hook up i'm actually gonna let this only do a few more so that we can start getting the processors there we go get two of them should be enough for now and we're gonna want to get some capacity cards probably i'm probably gonna want four of them so let's see that should be enough cool so what I want to do is make one minor change to the system over here, and then we're going to start working on a different project. But I just wanted to kind of wrap it up, uh, make sure everything's functioning in a nice, efficient way. One thing that we get, and you can see mobs spawning and dying in there, is uh, a regular amount of loot that we probably don't want to hang on to. Things like bows and golden armor and leather armor. Just kind of stuff that's junk, and we don't need or want to worry about. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to configure this stuff to export to a trash can. Sound like a good plan? I hope so. So let's see, where are we going to put this guy? That's the question, because I want to make sure that I can actually do a couple things with this. Uh, let's put him here for the time being, and we're going to put one export bus here. But before we configure it, I want to make sure it's set up properly. So let's put it there. And then you'll notice that you're only allowed to, with export buses, choose uh, one slot until you add capacity cards. Each capacity card gives you a few more slots here, up to a total of nine. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to get was a fuzzy card. And what that does is it allows it to ignore things like NBT and metadata. So if we place the fuzzy card in here, you can see you can change your fuzzy comparison. Uh, so we'll just do match any. That means it'll match any pair of golden boots instead of just the golden boots with this exact same level of durability, which is exactly what we want because whenever you get these golden boots, you wind up with all kinds of different things. So let's get bows in there. Let's get golden chest plate, golden leggings, leather boots, hat, and tunic. And that should be a good thing to configure so far. Does that look good? Try and keep these things all somewhat together. I guess I don't have a golden helmet yet, right? Probably not. And then the bow, of course, which I forgot. But that, that should be a good start. So we'll get the bow in there. And then we'll just drop a trash can on. And then it should start exporting all those items to trash cans. Cool. So you can see things are disappearing from there. So let's give it a second. We're gonna make sure that it actually does destroy all that stuff. It'll only export the items that I put in the filter, so it won't be deleting any other items, which is pretty much exactly what we want, right? So there we go, that looks good, right? I could throw this iron shovel in there. I mean, I'm sure, you know, we won't get too many of those, but I don't want this system clogging up because remember the key to the system is that 
It's not so important how many items you have, but how many different types of items. And each one of those bows and different damage variables on the armor count as a different item. If it's a different item stack, it's a different item technically, right? So that's why we want to make sure to trash all that stuff because we really just don't want it, you know, hanging around in there, wasting up stuff. We will quickly run out of room in our AE system if we let this run. I don't know how chicken got in there. I'm just gonna leave that out. So what I'm gonna do is consider that complete. I will eventually wind up having a second export bus here. So let's grab, you know, I'll leave it for now, but at some point I could wind up having an export bus on this side and even on the top if I needed to. But for now, we don't really need much more than what we've got. Um, we'll probably want at least a second one eventually. We'll see as the system starts filling up. But yeah, for now, we're pretty set. So this guy's done for now. Uh, I will eventually, I don't think I'm going to start on it just yet. I'm going to let the blaze rod thing run for a bit because I do want to get myself a good number of blaze rods. But for now, uh, I'm going to leave this system as is, and we're going to add on to this thing in the future. And I'll add it so that you can have other types of monsters get spawned. But for now, blazes is all I really need. So we'll let that be. Um, I should really move this back somewhere reasonable at some point. But, I mean, we're actually doing pretty well Ender Pearl wise so eh. I'll move it eventually. For now, let's get working on a project. So guys, I'd like to get back into Thaumcraft. Uh, last time we left off with Thaumcraft, we did a few things. Uh, we built this nifty room here, and I've mostly filled it with all the aura nodes that I'm interested in having, at least for now. And that gives us direct access to wand recharging, which means that whenever we use our wand, or is it in my blue backpack, I think, uh, we can go ahead and bring it back here, no problem, get it refilled and recharged. Oh, there it is, it's not even in a backpack. So you can see I've used up some of the uh, Ordo and Perdito magic on this thing. I'm gonna go and just plop it on there and boom it'll automatically refill from the adjacent things this makes for a lot of nice automation it means i don't have to worry about getting my wand recharged i would like to start focusing on a little bit more automation that we're going to use in thaumcraft going forward so there's a handful of things that i want to get going um, that are going to help us in our thaumcraft career and i'd like to do some automation there's some things that i want to do that i don't think we've ever done before in thaumcraft so we're going to get started by taking a look at essentia crystallization now i've briefly covered this in my Forgecraft series, but in the single player series here, I want to build some serious automation around this. What this allows you to do is it's a device that lets you convert the liquid essentia that typically gets stored in jars, dun 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 dun, and place it in the Essentia Crystallizer and it will condense it down into an item form. What's really nice about that is that we can then have uh, individual Essentia aspect items available. So for example, right, Sugarcane has uh, one water, one air, and one uh, herba, right? Or uh, iron, for example, has four iron in it, right? And uh, let's see, um, this guy has two terra and two aurum. Right? So if we were to place this in here, we would always get two Terra and two Orm out of the uh, ethereal essence that we've got here. And maybe that's a little bit of a waste. For example, when we do our crucible work, we don't want to have extra Essentia stuff in there. We want to have the exact right amount. So by crystallizing it, we can have that and make that accomplishable. Now, I don't want to build a system that can handle all Essentia types because there's a good number of essentia that's either almost never used or just extremely rarely used. And I don't think we need to have that kind of essentia on hand, but the common essentia that's kind of a hassle to get your hands on, uh, like magic and uh, maybe potentia, a couple of these other types that are just less common and something that we would like to automate. So we're gonna start off with a bit of automating to keep a certain number of those available at all times. And there's of course a couple different ways we could go about this. And we're gonna go about it in what I hope will be an interesting and entertaining way. So we're going to get started uh, preparing for this build by probably digging out underneath this room. Uh, I'm going to have several automation steps for Thongcraft. We're going to do this among a couple other things that I have planned. So I want to have like a nice big open area for all the Thongcraftium uh, automation that we're going to be doing. So let's get ourselves a couple things. I'm going to want my Diervator. Dun, 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 dun which has a decent amount of haste on it. Its durability is actually kind of, oh no, it uh, gets recharged. Right, we've got flux on there, so we're fine. Uh, let's go ahead and give this guy a little bit of work to do. Cool, so I'm gonna clear out the area downstairs here and we will be back once I've done so. Cool, back in a minute.
All right, guys, before we get too complicated building down there, real thing I want to make real fast is an arcane lamp. Daylight sensor on the top. Uh, night ore on the bottom with some amber blocks and some iron should get us the daylight sensor that we want. Just need a little bit of thalmium magic, and that gets me three of them. I don't know that I'm going to need three, but it's good to have a few extras just in case. So let's pop downstairs where you can see I've already done some digging out, and it's already spawning bats. Thanks. I wanted bats. Thank you. Go away. Uh, so let's try getting somewhere into the center-ish of this room for the arcane lamp to hopefully light things up for us. So one of the things I love about the arcane lamp... Wow, that bat just doesn't want to be killed today, does he? All right. So one of the things I like about the arcane lamp is... There we go. Got him. That it's really cool. Let's see. Where's a good center point for this room? I want to say here-ish. That looked like it's pretty much centered. I guess if I was being really smart about this, I would grab my tape measure, right? So if we wanted to tape measure this room out, we could see here to here is about 15. So here to here should be seven, cool. Here to there is nine, to here is 10. About as close as you're going to get to the center uh, of this room. So let's go ahead and put the arcane lamp here and see how well it lights things up. So if we take a look at F7, we'll see that it's quickly going to spread its light out from its center location. And you can see, nice, it's doing what we want it to do. It's lighting up the entire area. That's what I like about arcane lamps. They do a pretty good job of lighting up a rather large area. So um, we'll see here, this one will fill up. It takes a few seconds for the light to disperse and spread out among the whole place. But one lamp lighting up the whole room? Yes, I will absolutely take that. All right, I'm gonna get one more layer of digging down here and I will come back in a minute when I'm done. So as usual, I did not luck out too well in digging this out and ran myself into some kind of wall. That's okay, I've got a builder's wand and a bunch of smooth stone already cooked up, and that means I can quickly and easily flesh out this floor. Nice, look at that, really good, right? Um, and I could probably even wand of equal trade some of this stuff just to make it that much nicer. See how easily you can terraform a basement to look at least halfway decent? Beautiful. Provided, of course, you have the resources. Alright, so that basement doesn't look too bad. Cool. And uh, I can probably do that and fill this in. A few more finishing touches, and we've got a nice, half-decent thaumaturgist basement. I like it. Nice. All right, so let me uh, dump all this stuff, and I'm going to make a real quick elevator for us, and then we'll be back to start working on what we're going to have automation-wise down in this basement that I just made. And you can see, of course, that uh, the whole area is well lit, courtesy of that awesome lamp. Gotta love it. That little corner will probably light up. If it doesn't, eh, I'll deal with it in a bit. All right, elevator time. All right, so I've got my elevators ready to go here. Let's pop back over here. And we're gonna want to probably set up the elevator like this. And I'm gonna dye him purple. And this elevator dyed purple. Elevators of the same color connect to each other. If they're different colors, they won't work. At least this kind of fits in with the color scheme of the room. A little bit. All right, it's not ideal, but it works. And I can get up and down, and oh look, that little red spot went away. Cool. So we're in good shape. All right, so let's get to automating. All right, guys, so there's a few things we're going to want to make here. First, we're going to get ourselves a handful of Quicksilver drops, and we're going to combine those with a handful of nuggets glass and iron and that given a silverwood wand will get us a handful of essentia tubes we're definitely going to want some of these guys ready to go the other thing we're going to want is to get ourselves some v filters we're going to want i don't know 10 of them sounds about right sure why not grab ourselves not a pocket computer but instead some great wood planks 
And we can put this away, this away, and that away for the time being, I think. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is combine some Essentia tubes, I thought, with a lever. But now I'm thinking I might have done that wrong. Let's see. Essentia tube plus lever. Oh, it has to be done in the Arcane Workbench. Okay. So you plus you gets me the Essentia valve. And then uh, the thing to make here is this guy, the alchemical construct. So great wood plank in the middle, valves in the corners, and V filters in the corners, okay? Valves in the corners, V filters in the corners, and tubes all around, nice. My first alchemical construct, I think, maybe. Anyway, so now that we've got that guy ready, we can go ahead and use him to make ourselves the first of what may be a few uh, Essentia Crystallizers. I haven't decided entirely how many of these I want to go with and make, uh, but we're going to need a couple balanced shards, which we've seen how to make before, and we're also going to need a dispenser. Okay, I didn't notice that. How am I for balanced shards? I've got a couple of those, so that's good. That's going to make my life a lot easier. Um, we're going to want wood, an iron, and a tube. That shouldn't be too hard. Iron. We can request wood through here. tube we got and then I just need the dropper so I'm probably going to have to pop back here to make that what was it a dropper or a dispenser dispenser don't think I have any bows handy so we'll just make one real quick I'm going to make a few of these because I always seem to need some we'll leave the rest in the AE system There we go, and Essentia Crystallizer. Nice! Uh, now, real quick, I'm going to build another system like this. So I'm going to want an alchemical furnace, an arcane alembic, and I might even want a golem. So I will be back in a minute once I've done that all off camera. You've seen that before. Alright guys, I think I've got everything I need to get started here. So let's pop downstairs and decide where we want to build this. I'm thinking right along this wall might not be a terrible spot to build this first setup here. So the first thing I'm going to want is the alchemical furnace with the arcane alembic on top. We're also going to want some kind of a fuel source. So let's grab some coal out of our AE system, which I'm really thankful can reach all the way down here. That is awesome. And lots of coolness. Uh, from there, I'm thinking, do I want a jar or do I really even need a jar? I almost feel like I don't need a jar. Um, I don't think I have any handy in the AE system. If I do, I'll use one. If not, maybe I should make one. Let's try it with, and then if we decide that we don't really need it, then so be it. So I think I just need one of these and a wooden plank, right? So I think the jar is something like this and that. Yeah, water jar. I'm gonna try it with, like I said. Um, so because we're gonna have a very simple system down here that's really not worried about multiple types of Essentia, I'm only gonna go with one Arcane Alembic, and I'm also not gonna use a Golem. I'm gonna use the Arcane Essentia tubes. Uh, so what we're gonna wind up with here is the following. I'm gonna go ahead and place down the Essentia tube like this. And then I'm going to place down the Essentia Crystallizer, right like so. Cool. And then you'll notice there's a little slot on the top of the Essentia Crystallizer. That's where the Essentia, the crystallized Essentia, will pop out. And if you place a chest up there, or any inventory for that matter, it'll land in the chest instead of just landing in the world, which is fine. That's ideal. So... Let's do the following. In fact, I might go with a couple more jars. I have an idea or two now that I've been kind of putting this together in my head. Let's get a couple more wooden planks. Let's go with three jars in total. So I'm going to need a little bit more glass. There we go. 
So those jars are ready. Let's grab a few things that I know I kind of always want to have handy on hand. So let's take something that we make a lot of, like Procantio. I, I know I typically need a lot of that. Uh, now there's obviously a lot of sources of Procantio and we can look in our book to see if there's any that jump out at us. Uh, the one that I usually go with uh, for Percantio is the sandstone blocks. So let's see, where is that stuff? Percantio, there it is. So there's a lot of options, obviously, right? Um, interesting. So like enchanting tables, for example, of Percantio on them. But I think the sandstone, the chiseled sandstone, is definitely one of them that does, right? So let's check that out. All right, guys, so one of the things I'm going to make here, and this is the one that I usually go with for this build or this kind of thing, is the following. If you make yourself some chiseled sandstone, definitely a cool thing. And let's grab our thermometer, because apparently I haven't scanned this yet. But this is a good source of Procantio, if you are ever looking for one. Uh, obviously, you could also go with, uh, like, the great wood logs. That's another good source of Procantio. But keep in mind, that has a lot of arbor on it. So sand is easy to come by. Great wood logs, not hard to come by, but there's an excess amount of arbor that you really just don't want to have to deal with, right? So let's make sure that we've scanned this thing, chiseled sandstone. See, look, it's just one Procantio. Nice. So what we can do then is come down here and see how this is going to work. So what should happen is if I toss these guys in here, they should start going. And you'll notice that the Essentia Crystallizer can store one of each Essentia type at all times, right? So this thing's cooking down. Um, let's see what do we got in here. Three, four. You actually should be making your way into the warded jar, and I'm not entirely sure why he's not at this point, but might be because of the way the pipes work. You know what? I can probably solve that slightly. I'm going to remove this pipe connection here. So this guy should start spinning up. And you'll notice it does take quite a while for us to produce the uh, crystallized essentia, but don't worry, I've got a plan to speed things up a little bit, which we'll get to in a minute. So let's wait for this thing. Yeah, it takes a really long time, I'm not going to lie. Wow, come on, essentia crystallizer. Crystallize, would you? There we go. Poof! We got a crystallized Essentia. Uh, and we can go ahead and scan that and discover that there is, uh, well, nothing can be learned from it, but I guess there's just one Percantio inside. So I guess you can scan them. But long story short, just one Percantio. This isn't going to be super useful, right? Obviously sandstone, right? We could just be dropping that in by itself. But other things like, um, I don't know, anything else that we've got here, right? So this guy, for example, if we wanted to have a bunch of air aspect, we could throw some arrows in. And if we wanted to have some other things, right, there's a ton of stuff we could go. I wonder what's in potatoes. Oh yeah, look at that, cool. So there's a bunch of things we can do with this. We'll get into some more detail in a bit, but what I wanna do is remove this guy for a moment, remove this guy for a moment, and try this pipe process a little bit differently. So that should fill up and wind up dumping all the uh, Percantio into there, cool. Now, if I were to put this on here, he should be able to draw the Essentia out of this. It looks like he's doing something along those lines. You know what I need? To really understand what's happening here, let's grab the Essentia Resonator. That's what I want. Do I have that in here? Alchemy, Essentia tubes, cool. Just need another quartz and four iron and some kind of stick. That shouldn't be too hard to come up with. Stick and another quartz and some iron. The Essentia Resonator is kind of going to give you some hints about how this piping system works and let you know like where things are in the system and whatnot. All right, so I thought I had less iron in there than I did. So if we come over here, we'll see. And I want to put my chest back before I forget. Contains one Percantio Essentia. All right, so there's one Percantio in each of these. Cool. And there's seven still hanging out in the Arcane Olympic. So this guy... 
Procantio uh, or, or Magic Essentia in these tubes is built on a suction system. So the way this works is this guy has a suction of 32. So he's pulling with a suction level of 32 across all the pipes. This guy is pulling with a suction of 64. So he's definitely got a stronger suction amount. I thought I could use these as a buffer point, but I guess I can't. Um, there is a couple things I could do if I really wanted to get crazy with it, but for now it's okay. The buffer, I guess, will just be on the Arcane Alembic here. So if I really want buffers, instead of using warded jars, I should have more Arcane Alembics. But you'll notice this thing is slowly but surely turning its crystallized essence uh, from its Essentia. That's what we wanted to do. Now let's look at speeding it up. There's a couple things we're gonna need to get it sped up. Uh, and for that, we're gonna have to dig into our Thaumaturgy section, and I'm gonna have to research uh, this research note right here, which is Harnessing B. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to handle the research off camera, and then we'll come right back. There we go, Harnessing V, Research Discovered. Now this is a pretty cool mechanic. Uh, the V uh, Harnessing module is the node transducer. What this thing does is you take a node stabilizer, which we've seen already, you give it some upgrades in the Arcane Workbench, and you're gonna have some pretty crazy things start to happen. Uh, let's take a look at what's involved. So first thing that we're gonna do is make ourselves a node transducer. So we're gonna need some blocks of redstone, a comparator. I'm gonna make this off camera. All right, guys, you remember uh, this recipe, but I need to recharge my Essentia real quick. So you go in there. Nice. That's what I like about having this thing handy. Lots and lots of free Essentia just to recharge my wand as needed. That should be close to enough. I think I needed the Ordo as well for that, didn't I? Yeah, I need 32 Ordo. Oh, well. Let's let this thing finish up. That should be enough for now. Come on now. There we go. Uh, node stabilizer is the first thing you need. All right, guys, this is the node transducer. Cool. Uh, now, we're actually going to want another node stabilizer, so let me make another one of those, because you need both for this piece. So I need another node stabilizer while I'm here. And there we go. Now I just need to get myself a node. Uh, now, what we're gonna do uh, in particular, this node that we've got, uh, we wanna have a really strong earth node. Uh, the reason being, and you'll notice on the alchemy tab here, it'll tell you that we can supply Terra V to greatly increase the speed of the Essentia Crystallizer. That's what we're about to do. So let's look at our waypoints here and see if we've got a good uh, Terra V. Let's see, air, water, perdito, Air Earth, Terra, 441 miles away. All right, let's find that guy. All right, so that might be a contender. Let me fly out to him. All right, looks like we're coming in close to this guy. Let's see here. Terra node is... Well, that's a decent one. It's like 70. Nice, I'll take it. All right, so you're coming with me, Terra node. Uh, teleposition focus goes in there. And... Yoink. Meet you guys back at the base. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, what I'm gonna do is get myself a redstone block and we're gonna pop downstairs. Now we're all familiar already with the node stabilization mechanic, right? Uh, you place your node stabilizer right there and he's going to stabilize the node, make him friendly, everybody's good, right? Now if we want, we can drain energy directly out of this node rather than the way we've got it working upstairs. We can power some of our Thaumcraft machines directly with the power that's built into these Thaumcraft energy nodes. And to do that, we're gonna need our node transducer. Now it has to sit on top of a stabilized node, like so. The other thing it needs is a steady redstone signal to keep it running. If you ever remove this redstone signal, I'm not going to say it's going to be the worst thing in the world, but, you know, you don't want to do it unless you really want to do it. I'll explain why in a minute, because watch what happens. We've got 68 Terra Essentia V stuff in there. We pop that in and boom, you'll notice that quickly this thing is draining all the Essentia. It's gone. All the V power out of this node is gone and it's completely neutralized it. That's because all the stored V in the node is gone and it's kind of opening the doorway to the source of the V and it's going to allow us to drain a certain amount of V every tick. And the amount that you can drain is based on the size of the node. Now, downstairs at the moment, all we really need is Terra V, but there's some other machines that can run on other kinds of V, and we're going to definitely look into making a bigger, better node that's going to have all the aspects in it, 
but we'll get to that later on in the series. For now, all we need is Terra V. So we're letting the node transducer do its work, and in a moment here, it's going to completely stabilize this node to the point where it's able to constantly and steadily draw the V out of here. So let's watch. Boom. Done and done. So you can see that now this node is capable of producing eight cent of V or uh, eight V per tick or so or something like that. So you can look into uh, reading the Thaumonomicon entry all about this cool stuff if you want more details on how this works. Okay. Now the other thing we might want is a balance shard surrounded by iron. So let's see, I think I've got one more balance shard and a little bit of iron. This is what's going to allow us to transfer this magical energy across our base. So right now he can't tap into that guy, but if I place this thing, say right here, boom. Now uh, this thing actually should also be connecting to the Essentia Crystallizer. I think it's just a visual bug that it's not, but watch what happens when I decide that I want to uh, cook up some more stuff. So let's say that we might want, I don't know, we'll throw some baked potatoes in there. That sounds good, right? Boom, you go ahead and start cooking up. What's gonna happen is this thing's gonna start getting it, and you'll notice that this thing turned a bright green. That's because that um, stuff is going in there. Look how much faster this thing operates. Like, look, it just processed two different types of V. Boom and boom, done. So with this energy node, which again, there should be a beam going from here to the Essentia Crystallizer. I think that's just a visual bug, uh, but it speeds up the Essentia Crystallizer significantly. So as you can see, we probably don't need the water jars anymore. See you later, guys. Uh, the Arcane Alembic here quickly um, turning this stuff into the crystallized V. I was considering having more Essentia crystallizers, but as fast as this is going with a uh, size eight node here, I almost feel like we don't have to. Like this thing is just cruising, boom. In about a few seconds, it already completed more than it took probably five or 10 minutes worth of uh, crystallization to happen earlier. And it's not the type of V that matters. They all crystallize at the same speed. It's so much faster just because we've got this node here charging and powering this thing up. So like I said, should be a beam of energy going into this, but it's not, just a visual bug. Maybe it'll be fixed uh, in 1.04 of the pack, which is actually currently in beta as of the time of this recording and might be available to you guys as a recommended build by the time this recording goes live. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and build some automation around this process that we just came up with. What I'd like to have is a steady amount of certain types of V available at all times. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, leave me some feedback in the comments. Let me know if you thought it was cool and all that good stuff. I do enjoy reading your comments. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Take it easy.